Hi, everyone. I'm Nico Meyering. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with parted blonde hair. Uh, I'm wearing blue and brown spectacles, as well as a green flannel shirt. I'm seated in front of a purple wall and some bookcases. And like about 20% of this world's population, I'm disabled. Non-disabled people might look at our lives and our shared experiences and see only sadness or tragedy or pity, but I don't know, guys. I've been disabled a really long time, and if I had to only feel one emotion, whether that's sadness, anger, pity, my entire life, I'd get pretty bored. However, the disability community has as many members as it has opinions, which is why I've asked my friend Addie here today to join me and talk about disabled joy. Addie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So a little self-description. I am a woman with blonde hair. I'm wearing a pink shirt with flowers and sparkles at the top. My background is my bedroom, which includes TV, old fireplace with a heater attached and green walls. Thank you so much, Addie. It's been a really long time that I saw a heater like that. Fantastic. Addie, can you recall a joyful moment in your life? It doesn't have to interact with your disability, but it could. Just share that with us. Yes. As I was preparing for this interview, I looked at that question, and what immediately came to mind is um, a time with my late grandmother, a specific trip. Um, I love to travel. I traveling on and off since I was a child. Anyway, we knew that um, she was getting to a point in her life where things were gonna have to be done because we already knew that she um, had dementia and things of that nature. So anyhow, um, before her condition really got the better of her, better of her she had gotten a letter in the mail um, about a family member that had served in World War II and there's a museum in New Orleans where they put the names of people that served in that particular war in bricks and put them outside um, on the walkway. And she paid to have his name um, put on one of those bricks. And so as a family, my mother and I and my grandmother, and I think my aunt and my cousins uh, went down to that museum to see, to see not only the museum, but that particular brick. And there is a picture of us um, that I still have um, standing outside that museum with that brick. That sounds like a fantastic memory, Addie. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I'm glad that your family could honor that legacy and, and that connection. This brings me to my, my second question. How has being disabled um, impacted or interacted with your ability to pursue happiness, to find joy? Right. Um, this is this is a, a bit of an emotionally personal question for me. Okay. Um, like you, I've been disabled a very long time. Um, my whole life, actually, I was born with my condition, which I don't mind saying is cerebral palsy, and I'm a full-time wheelchair user. Um, as such, both personally and professionally, people don't tend to take me seriously until I open my mouth. Um, per on the personal scale, this can um, affect my friendships, my ability to have long-term friendships. And professionally, it, it really has affected me professionally because <clears throat> I was often told, you know, you need to get a nine to five um, receptionist type job because you're not going to succeed at right. any other type of profession. Now, I looked at that and I said to myself, you know, I don't think so. I mean, I tried to go that route for goodness, two years or so, not even one interview, which as far as the effect of joy thing goes, that was quite depressing. And so um, then I went the uh, entrepreneurial route and I'm in a much better mental state now. That's fantastic, Addie. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, one thing I've noticed as I've grown my disabled circle and met more disabled people is that a lot of us do go into like entrepreneurship or freelance work because other forms of employment aren't as good at letting us set our own schedule. 
So I definitely see you in that. Thank you again. So what thing, like what one thing, right, do you want non-disabled people to know about disability and disabled quality of life? I mean, the way I can sum that up in one sentence is please don't get the idea that people with disability, disabilities have nothing better to do but stay at home, wait for the next doctor's appointment, go to said doctor's appointment, and then come back home. Um, no, we are, we are out in the community as much as we can be due to um, the way um, current environments, physical environments are set up. And we are keeping appointments both, both in person and virtually, and we are not just sitting at home uh, waiting for the uh, lifespan clock to run out. Addie, thank you so much. That is a valuable thing to, to remember, right? And the last like planned question that I have is the one that I ask all of my interviewees for all of my projects. Um, so first off, is there a recent win that you're celebrating that we can help celebrate with you? Or, you know, if not, then where can people find you online? Um, what projects are you undertaking? This is your chance to, you know, be your own cheerleader or promote yourself. So let's hear it. Well, I don't have any necessarily current wins, though I do have um, several things that have come from previous wins um, <laughs> that I am working on. Um, uh, one project is one that I recently just managed to get the you know, go ahead for that I hope to it to come to a win in about a year. And in the meantime, um, like you, I do my own video series called Strides. And um, I also offer speaking as well as locally in my hometown, I offer, um, <clears throat> excuse me, facility inspections, where I basically can go to a building and look at it from the parking lot up and tell the landowner what needs to be done to make sure that that facility is ADA compliant. Um, as far as where people can find me, I have everything. I have three basic platforms. Um, actually four. <laughs> I get my brain all mixed up. Anyway, there's YouTube where I post my videos. There's Facebook, LinkedIn, which is my most pertinent one right now, and Instagram. Um, they can either look under the name of my business, which is Access for All LLC, or if that doesn't work, just type in Addie Ray, A-D-D-I-E-R-A-Y. Fantastic. Addie, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me and talk about uh, your pursuit of joy and what brings you um, a sense of satisfaction as well. I've really appreciated this time. So again, thank you. Everyone, everyone take care and I'll see you next time. Remember, I'm rooting for you.